So um, I'm having a horrible headache and therefore um, it's time to talk about religions. The one thing about societies and how they work is that um, there is no society or social formation that does not forbid a some kind of speech. Now this idea that liberalism or liberal democracy is a type of society where everything can be ridiculed and everything can be criticized is of course false and it's not a critic of liberalism. Any person who is pro-liberal and specializes in liberal philosophy will agree to that statement. It's just a simple rule of society that there, in order for some political ideology or some religion to be active or to function, there needs to be something that you cannot talk about. This is, this, this is not even, it has nothing to do with philosophy. It, it is, I think that it is just a common wisdom. And what I want to do is to um, talk about a modern religion, that is, and I'm using the word religion in a loose sense here, although loose, although um, historically and I would say neuroscientifically accurate way. Namely, if we look at the etymology of religion, the Latin word religare, what it means is a binding, a sort of attachment, an obligation, um, a responsibility, right, to something. So, what is the modern attachment? What makes a modern society possible? What are the things that you cannot question in order for you to have questioning faculties in the first place? I think that there are a number of concepts that describe modern religion, universalism, socialism, this and that. But I think that since I have a biological background, everyone has a biological background, since I have a background in biology, I think that um, the best term that, it, that has been devised is neurocreationism. Now, if you think about it, without neurocreationism, I don't think that a functioning liberal democracy is really possible at least the social liberalism. So neurocreationism then is a religion of a modern secular world. Modern secular world, since one of its elements is to plead allegiance to science, is therefore to accept evolution, namely that humans are not created by divine act, but rather are evolved from lower species, which I think is pretty established. However, 99% uh, of people who believe in evolution, of course, don't understand how it works, but anyway. However, unfortunately, the way it works is that... So what I was saying is that uh, evolution is actually accepted until it touches everything above the neck. If you think about it, if like, um, if modern society <clears throat> did not conceive Neurocreationism as its central element, as its central presupposition, then the whole premise of building a liberal democracy really crumbles. If everyone or every single per person, of course, not talking about people who are, have some inherent disabilities, if every single person does not have the same neurological potential for attaining the right mental capacities, then the idea of equality of opportunities or even equality of outcomes really doesn't make sense. So you need to have that presupposition that if right environment is provided, then everyone can basically get to a point where they can be successful, whether it is an intellectual success or financial success or whatever. Now, if you really establish the horror of inherent differences and how genetics influences your central nervous system and how your central nervous system then influences your outcomes, then liberal democracy really becomes a joke. And this is not something that I'm saying, you know, as a gotcha because uh, there are a number of good things about liberal democracy that is not worth doing away with, okay? So, I, but however, I think that it's inevitable that um, the scientific studies will basically demonstrate that all of those woo-woo secular neuroplasticity and all of those nurture social influences ideas about how social influences is all there is and basically that environment shapes 
everything about you. I mean, this religion will crumble because um, it is so false. It, it will just inevitably crumble. And the reason why I'm talking about this right now, consider that uh, from 60 to 80 percent of our DNA is expressed in central nervous system. Uh, we don't like we don't even know how how strong is the genetic influence on our mental abilities um generally in the bodybuilding community now and bodybuilding community really shows you that neurocreationism is the religion of the modern society because bodybuilding <laughs> symbolically and literally really conforms to the religion of neurocreationism whereby in bodybuilding and in fitness industry you analyze people's bodies up to the neck after the neck you know up to the neck the head isn't interesting you analyze people's bodies you appreciate people's musculature and everyone in bodybuilding community knows that without genetics you can never become a successful bodybuilder however this is not applied to our brains to the fact that most of our genes are expressed in the central nervous system so it might turn out and it is already the case that genetics have even more influence on our mental abilities than on our musculature and to add to that even you might even have like good genetics when it comes to building muscle but you might not have good dopamine system that will allow you to be consistent and disciplined. So even that, even having a good musculature is not enough for you to become a good bodybuilder. You also need good genetics when it comes to having a, you know, healthy dopamine system. Now, when I speak about genetics and its influence on central nervous system, I'm not talking about IQ. Uh, as a matter of fact, IQ is the least thing I'm interested in. You might have an IQ of 140 and you might have an executive dysfunction. You might be lethargic, your dopamine system might be broken and you might not achieve much in your life. On the other hand, you might have an IQ of 95 and you might be a beast, a workaholic with a very healthy dopamine system and you might become, you know, financially successful and whatnot. So, with that said, um, the reason why I began talking about this is because if liberals themselves and if liberal community does not address the issue of nature and nurture themselves, then it is going to create a space for sensationalism. And if we right now are witnessing a gender sensationalism, that is, the emergence of gender biologism, whereby, you know, everyone's talking about chromosomes and stuff. The next thing is going to be human nature sensationalism. And the same way gender sensationalism right now is a mouthpiece uh, for a very barbarian forces like the red pill force. It is going to be the same way for the human nature sensationalism and genetic sensationalism. You know, so I think that if liberalism is not quick enough to rest and basically um, try to speak about it before people use it as a some sort of sensational fact, namely that uh, yeah, human nature is real, then um, it's not going to be really good. Um, the outcome of that is not going to be beautiful. It's not going to be pretty. So um, I don't have headphones with me. So I accidentally left it at home and you're fucked. There's nothing I can do about it right now. I have to walk. So the only thing I've left since I can't listen to a lecture, so I have no headphones. Um, therefore, I need to talk to you. So um, that's uh, another problem. Now, there are a couple of issues with respect to me trying to talk right now. The first thing is that I'm sleep deprived. But there's one thing, OK, I have changed my mind with regard to how I'm going to approach the problem of sleep deprivation, how I am going, how I'm, how I'm going to feel about it. So in the past, when I was sleep deprived, let's say um, I, I, I lacked one hour of sleep or something, that day was completely fucked. 
It's like, if I'm sleep deprived, if I lack like even 30 minutes of sleep, yeah, I'm fucked. I'm a zombie. I can't do anything. So that day is basically non-existent for me. Now I reconsider that. It's like, I don't, I don't care. If it so happens that I get sleep deprived, I will uh, still try to do everything I can, irrespective of how productive I'm going to be. It's better to try and tell your brain that you are consistent with what you're doing, even if you're sleep deprived, than just not doing it. So that's one problem. And the fact that I'm sleep deprived will affect my verbal abilities. So the way I'm going to talk to you is not going to be beautiful. It's not going to be pretty. The second problem is that I'm very tired. And the thing about, okay, so here's the thing, okay? When you are, when you're, when English or any other language is your third language, especially English, it so happens that in the morning, when you're all rested, you're feeling good, you're healthy, like you're speaking okay. At night, when you're all exhausted and stuff, I literally turn into Borat. <laughs> like, your performance drops to the point where it's like I got C1 on my IELTS test, but as you might know, um, those IELTS tests and those TOEFLs, they are all bullshit. They don't actually test your fluency. I'm not fluent, but I've got C1. So the problem with those testing systems is that, so for example, I've been engaging with English text all my life. So my reading comprehension is, is really, really good. Uh, and on my IELTS test, uh, on an academic test, let let me flex that i got nine out of nine on uh, on the reading comprehension test to my surprise i got 8.5 in speaking but that was because i stuffed myself with um, some heavy psychopharmacology but i'm not going to tell you what i took because psychopharmacology is my my arcana it's it's, it's basically my my magic power that i don't share with people for free so I got 8.5 in writing. Oh, no, no. In Like I got 8.5 in speaking and I fucked up listening and writing, unfortunately. So basically my listening, I got like 7.5 because I didn't understand what the fuck that person was talking in my ear and there was only one repetition and there was like a whole section about whales. I think it was from Moby Dick. And it, 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 it's, yeah, I completely missed that and I couldn't classify those whales according to their species or whatever. In the writing task, the essay was really, really boring and I was completely sleep deprived. So it so happens that because I have a generalized anxiety disorder and ADHD and uh, delayed sleep phase disorder and maladaptive daydreaming disorder and restless leg syndrome and uh, something else that I forgot, uh, it all always so happens that if, if I have a particular responsibility next day, I need to wake up or something, there's no chance I'm going to sleep. It's, it's a one-nighter. It's like there's no way I'm falling asleep if I know that next day I have to go somewhere, that I have a responsibility, I, I just can't sleep. Doesn't matter what I take, nothing will make me sleep. So that's that. So I was completely sleep deprived, but still got C1. Now I'm trying to apply for my graduate program in philosophy so that I don't become a YouTube philosopher. There's nothing wrong with being a YouTube philosopher, but um, having an academic training is still important. Four universities actually die off. We need to uh, be quick and get some education that they can still offer. Because universities will die. Or if they, or they're going to be just restructured. I mean, I don't want to sound very post-structuralist or very Foucault-centered in this case, but those buildings that are dedicated to universities, they will have to find some new functions. It would be interesting what functions those buildings will take up. If you read Foucault, a fascist philosopher from France, basically it was one of his like tricks to always like he did it with uh, in case of like psychiatry, with the emergence of psychiatry and con with its connection to Black Plague and with other things whereby uh, buildings that are being left without function then take up a different function uh, which is a very narrow way of seeing things but you know there is some truth to it anyway now my dad needs to pick me up and i've completely forgot 
where we agreed to meet. So what I was talking about. So yeah, so I become a Borat since yeah, and like what I so the point of my arc with a uh, with um, IELTS is that uh, yeah, on paper you could be like C1. Like if I prepared for my IELTS, which I of course did not, because you know I'm a tough guy and an idiot, so I didn't prepare. But if I prepared, I'm sure I would have got like C2. But that's the thing, right? If you do not live in an English-speaking community, on paper, you can perfectly get like C2, which an, like a native English speaker can't, an average one, but that doesn't matter. You're still not fluent because um, that's the thing, right? On paper, yeah, that's a different thing. Unfortunately, there is a huge problem with the standardized tests, namely that most of the time those uh, standardized tests and even IQ tests, like SAT, GRD, all of those, they actually measure your agreeableness and conscientiousness. They measure your left hemisphere capacities. They measure how good you can conform to a rule-based system. They measure how good are you in following a curriculum. How good are you in applying instructions. So those tests tell you how good of a slave you are going to be. And um, the fact that I didn't prepare and I still got a high score means that I am smart enough to... Okay, narcissism is kicking in. Um, it's just abort that immediately. Abort. You need to be really, really self-aware. The moment you don't listen to Andrew Tate and uh, maniac criminals, the moment you start bragging about yourself, you need to become self-aware and abort that operation immediately. Now, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't appreciate your work or you shouldn't appreciate your achievements or stuff, but no, there's something really cringy about like speaking how good you are. It's like, like there's something really, really, I have to battle with that every single day. So, oh, okay, what else? So, see, so yeah, so what I was talking about then is that, so every time I'm like exhausted and I, I'm completely fucked, uh, I become Borat and my English uh, is basically dead. Okay, that was, um, okay. there are not, not so many distractions in uh, like in Caucasus region, I mean like uh, modern obsession with destructions. I am dry. And when I say I'm dry, I mean it. I am thirsty to the point where, yeah. <laughs>